Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Today we're getting ready to do a tutorial on a snowman. We're going to chainsaw carve a basic, simple snowman for you beginner carvers out there. I'm going to give you guys a step-by-step -step walkthrough. We'll have two camera views as long as everything goes well. But the first thing I want to do is go over a tool list and some things you're going to need. So, first thing you guys are going to need, a chainsaw. It doesn't have to have this. This is my camera so that you guys are going to be able to see those first-hand cuts. Piece of cardboard in a box cutter all right your chunk of wood this is one that's already done we're basically gonna make a snowman about that size okay a couple paint brushes kind of like a thin brush and maybe a wider brush some paints I use just an acrylic paint the stuff you guys get at Wally World orange white red a black and then whatever color you want to make his hat and his scarf be, which I'm just going with this red and this blue, whatever the heck I grabbed off the shelf. A couple other things that are not in the shop that you're gonna need. A jaw horse. I use a jaw horse for small carvings. That you, That's what you should be using as well. It's pretty safe and in the scheme of things, if you're gonna be spending all the money and getting going, a jaw horse is a great investment. You should also have a pair of safety shoes and a pair of chaps. I like to wear gloves and earmuffs and a dust mask as well, but they're not always necessary. So, without further ado let's uh let's start making a snowman guys real quick guys i forgot something else and that's going to be an angle grinder with a flap disc now if you've got a saber tooth disc like what i usually use using like the fine or the medium grid will be just fine but i figured a lot of you are using a flap disc so angle grinder with a flap disc if you have a flap sander great you'll be able to use it if you don't no worries you don't need a flap sander okay now we can start making some sawdust all right, here we go. Gonna go in. This is the bottom of the carving, right? This is gonna be the bottom of our log upside down in the jaw horse. What I'm doing is I'm making some angled cuts. If you've done some pumpkins, it's basically the same thing. What we're doing is we're sort of rounding that edge just a little so it doesn't come straight down to the ground or the floor, but it'll kind of round in sort of like the bottom of a snowball. That's kind of the idea. So rounded it over. And uh, knocking off any corners or edges or anything like that, the more precise you are, the less sanding you'll have to do later. So that's up to you. All right, guys, while your log's upside down, put your initials in the bottom. This won't disrupt your workflow later on as you get into the piece. Once you get that done, go ahead and flip the log back over so the right side is up, the bottom side is down. I put a two by four underneath it so I can get as much height out of the log as possible while still being in the jaw horse. We are making angled cuts. So that first cut would be one side of the hat. This will be the back side of the hat or the snowman and this will be the front side. The side facing me, we're not making an angle cut quite yet. That's where the ball of the hat is going to be right there. So we're kind of going to round that off. We'll round our corners off and start sort of shaping again. Even if they're little cuts, that's less sanding you got to do later because it's quicker with the saw. So here we go. Doing a little bit of a line, kind of just making some shallow cuts underneath here for the ball of that hat. This can be as precise as you guys want or not very precise at all. You know, it's up to you. This is your piece. So there's that cut. Now we take the saw and I'm doing a back cut. Right here I actually overcut. It's all right though, it'll work out. So going under the ball, we're cutting away. Not really a good view there, sorry, but you guys can see the piece that's now missing. Come through from the other side, kind of cut it away and work it away. So you can see it's sort of like a hat drooped over, right? That's kind of the goal. That is the whole point. Using the saw, just kind of shaping around Again, this is going to save you time sanding if you use the nose of that bar and just sort of shape it. Outline in where that ball is going to be. And then we're going to come from the other side and meet the line we just made. So that the hat's a little more narrow and that ball will stick up and be fluffier looking, right, than the end of the hat. Really, I'm glad you guys are watching. I hope you're enjoying it. Be sure to give me a thumbs up and hit subscribe if you guys haven't already. And if you are subscribed, be sure to hit that bell, hit all, and make sure your YouTube notifications are on. I can look at the stats. A lot of you don't hit all, a lot of you don't hit the bell, and a lot of you don't have your YouTube notifications on. There's only like 
17% out of 14,000 of you, there's only 17% that actually hit all the buttons so you don't miss videos. Just saying. Just saying. You might be missing some good content. I don't know. Maybe. Or you're missing bad content. I guess it depends on how you look at it. <laughs> All right, guys, so that's our basic shape of the hat, right? You can keep going around and keep shaping, uh, keep removing what looks like a corner to kind of round it so it's less sanding. Now, what I want to think about doing here is the front of our snowman, where the face is. So this is a Dixon wood crayon. I have links to this and whatever tools I can through Amazon down below. Like I said, you guys purchased those links. They help support the channel, and I do appreciate it. So I'm trying to draw the lower edge of the hat so I know how it's going to wrap around. I want it to swoop up over the face. This is a little bit different design than the one we just had on the bench, but I think this will be a little bit easier because we don't necessarily have to separate the entire hat like on the other snowman. So now I work my way around the carving, making that line connect all the way around. It's pretty much just as a straight line after you do the swoop in the front. So now we just work our way around the piece and connect it. Now we want to remove material from the bottom side up to the line we just created. So we're making an undercut with the top of the saw. And be careful because if the nose of the bar hits, it will run up the carving. Have a good grip. Be prepared for kickback. Your chainsaw carving. It happens. Got to be prepared for it. So here we're continuing to make up cuts. As you guys can see on the left... You see where the material is being removed, right? And we're starting to slant upward. We're not trying to remove a ton of material. I'm leaving probably about half an inch. So that hat probably sticks out quarter to half an inch off the carving after I remove material. We don't want to remove too much more than that. We need to have room and space to create a uh, scarf. So now looking, thinking, okay, the face is coming at a little bit different angle, kind of remove the material up to the hat for where the face is going to be. Now, I like to smooth it out a little bit more, but you guys could have that protrude like it is if you want. I like it so the face is kind of looking like it's tucked behind the hat a little bit instead of protruding out past the hat. See right there, the saw grabbed and put a cut line up in the hat. Those things happen. Yep. Got a little loose on the grip. Now, taking my wood crane again, kind of just coming down and giving myself an idea of, like, how the scarf's going to come down. Right? So the scarf will swoop low. The spot between the scarf and the hat's where the face will be. So we're going to have to put that line in, as you guys can see. Now, I am running a battery saw, but you guys can do this with your MS-170, 180, something with a small bar and chain. This is running that 43-gauge Pico chain, so it's really small stuff. Can't be using a big saw for this unless you're making a really big carving. Smaller saws are easier to handle and easier to maneuver. I always suggest the 170. Why? Because it's cheap. It's a cheap saw to get into carving with. So, we're making cuts down to the line we created. That line is the top of the scarf, so we don't want to cut through it. But we need to remove the material for the head to come down so that carf is... Carf? What the heck is a carf? So that scarf is three-dimensional, right? The scarf should stick off the body, not be level with the body of the snowman. And I'm just doing a little bit of shaping here with a bar, but that's what you guys can do, that technique right there. You have a good grip on the saw don't let the saw just pull away from you and just kind of scrape the wood this is a quick method you can sand like a good method for sanding with the chainsaw it does reduce your sanding time as well with the angle grinder all right so that's where our face will be right there and that's the top half of the scarf so now we got to think about moving our carving a little bit and what i like to do is spin him sideways so i can see the full body a little bit better because I know the scarf's going to hang down in the front, so I want it out of the way of the jaw horse. So now we're just going to make a cut line in. You want to go about as deep as you did on the top, you know, quarter of an inch, half of an inch. It just kind of depends on what you've already done. I'm making the scarf about three fingers thick. Again, eyeball it. Things don't have to be exact. You're giving this a go, you know. You're making this your own. This is an idea and a basic process, not an exact process. So the idea is for you to create your own art, hopefully using the tutorial that I'm uh, making for you guys. 
Now I like the scarf to come up and over itself. So like it's wrapped around itself to keep it in place. So here I'm not cutting all the way. I'm not doing the whole depth, but we're kind of just making a line using the side of the bar. Just a little bit of a line to define where the scarf wraps up over itself. Hopefully that makes sense. Hope you guys are enjoying this video though. If you are watching, be sure to give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment, you guys. Let me know, you know, did I get everything? Did I walk you through everything on this? Did I miss something? Did you need something else on this basic snowman carving? Let me know. Also, just a reminder, if you guys want to share your work, you can on Facebook. Look up Kyle Hall Woodworker, new carvers. Answer all the questions, everything, and then I'll let you in the group. If you don't, then I don't let you in. Keeps away all that spam and all that other junk. So as you can see, we put the snowman upside down, okay? Why? Because it makes it easier to remove the material underneath the scarf. So now we're going to be cutting down to the scarf. It just makes it easier for uh, shaping purposes when you can get to that lower side and we don't have to do any up cuts with the top of the bar. So we're cutting to the scarf and we're just removing material. It's, it's probably fairly self-explanatory, but hey, it's a tutorial, right? I'll walk you guys through it. So at this time, you guys can see we're pretty much going to complete that same process all the way around the snowman. Connect that line, right, for your scarf, and then start continuing to make angled cuts down and in to that line so that he has a bit of a rounded shaped body. And then you can sand it with the nose of the bar before you move on to your angle grinder and remove any hard edges with the chainsaw as well and just kind of continue to shape and round it. I like to make sure that lower half though is a little bit thicker than the top or almost the same. Now at this time, I just want to say big shout out to all my members. You guys are awesome. Everybody that's buying me a cup of coffee and everybody that has signed up for other tiers, you directly help support the channel and it really is a big deal. A cup of coffee isn't much, but you know what? I greatly appreciate it and I thank you. You guys rock, really. means a lot that anybody even signs up to tiers. It's, it really is humbling that uh, you guys help support the channel and help support me in that way. So big thank you to all of you. I've had some people on that members uh, stuff for quite a while and uh, you guys rock. Thanks. I, I really do appreciate it. So after we finished our cuts, we go through with the angle grinder. Now the goal here is to remove the chainsaw marks. I like to have the snowman looking smooth and I like to remove the dark spots where the bark was. Now I am using a solid full round log. What that means is this guy's probably going to split and crack when he dries out. If you could do this on a quartered log, it won't split and crack as bad and you won't have as many of these dark spots. These are the spots between the wood and the bark. When the bark is peeled, it's usually darker if the log has been sitting. So kicking the video a little bit more high speed because watching me sand is like watching paint dry in my opinion. But really all you guys want to do with that flap disc is work your way around and smooth everything out from the body to the scarf to the head to where the face is going to be. So take your time. Be safe. I know I don't have my guards on my angle grinder. Don't always do what I do. Do what I say, right? This is one of those times. Keep the guards on there. I have my own reasons for taking them off. They're not always safety reasons. So <laughs> keep your guards on. Be safe. Have a good grip. And uh, be aware of your guys' surroundings. It's always a good idea to have things clear for where you're going to be walking and have enough ample space for moving around your carving and working. You don't want stuff on the ground that you're going to trip over, right? Be safe and have fun. And uh, yeah, let's just jump ahead to paint because, guys, it's sanding. Sand it. Sand it till she's smooth. And boom. Getting ready for paint. So, piece of cardboard and a box cutter or knife. Now use the cardboard, hold it up to your carving, and look at the shapes you're going to need to make. All right, I kind of made the wrong shape there. That's not what I wanted to do. You want the, car the cardboard to cover the spaces you do not want paint. So I hold it up to the carving like this, and I think about, okay, what way am I going to cut this? And just do a rough shape. It doesn't even have to be perfect. It's just something quick. As you guys can see right there, change the angle a little bit, just enough so the overspray isn't covering my carving. If you get over spraying your carving like a ton of it, then you got to go back through and try to sand it. It's a pain in the butt if you're not using a die grinder. 
So cut your cardboard, hold it up there like I'm doing right here, and uh, paint. Now red is notorious for having overspray that you can pick out really, really easy. So again, use the cardboard, paint it up. Now we're and, actually uh, going to do the same process, same technique really for the scarf. Really. That's why we cut a couple different rounded angles and different shapes out of the cardboard so it can fit in the corners. And uh, yeah, some paints like right here, I'm not blocking off the red. You just don't have to. It sprays a nice clean line, so I'm not too worried about it. But here on the bottom, making sure to use it so I don't have overspray. Moving into hand painting. Busting out those acrylics. We're laying down some orange for the uh, carrot for the nose. You can paint it left, paint it right, whatever you guys want to do. This is just simple, basic technique stuff, okay? Make it your own. If you don't want to do a carrot, paint a round black dot and call it a piece of coal. Do, do whatever you want. I like the carrots, though. I think it makes them look cute. Now, I'm letting that orange dry, but we're going to make a deeper orange or darker orange with the red and re-outline that carrot later on. But first, I want to put some black in. So we're going to black... Blacken his eyes, or make him black eyes, or I don't know, I'm rambling, sorry. Paint some eyes, try to offset that right eye so things like look uniform. Now, the reason I want to do the black right now so it can dry up there is because we're going to use some white to give those eyes a little more character. Now, while the eyes dry and the nose dries, you go through and you put in your coal for the mouth. Just circles or squares or whatever you want to do. Keep in mind, this isn't something that should take a super long time, right? It's basic detail. It's not crazy detail. These aren't pieces. For me, I'm not making 100 bucks off these, right? The goal is for me to knock out a ton of these and sell them anywhere from 40 to 50 bucks. That's my plan. So that's why I'm painting it and not carving it. Now, as you guys can see on the right, actually on both screens, I'm just mixing a little bit of red with a little bit of the orange. Well, all the red with the orange. Just to get a little bit darker color. And we'll take that and outline the uh, carrot and then do like a couple lines so it looks more like a real carrot in his nose, right? Or as cartoony of a carrot as we can get. So it's not just an orange blob on there. This little outline does help as far as, uh, you know, paint technique and things like that. It's, again, not super complicated, not super technical. Just adds to the look, cutens the piece up. This is all done with a fine brush. I know I said you'd need two brushes, but I just ended up using the fine brush. You could use the thicker brush for the nose and the eyes, whatever you want to do. So here I'm putting some white on the eyes. Kind of define those eyes so they stand out. Now in between each color, I'm dipping the brush in water, swishing it around and wiping it off on my chaps. That way there I'm not mixing my colors. Water-based paints, you can do that super easy. You rinse it off, wipe it off, move on to the next color, keep your workflow moving. No time to wait. So now everything is done and drying as far as our face goes. Now I'm rinsing the brush off in between colors with water and then just wiping it off on the chaps. Just so you guys know we're not mixing colors every time we go through here, but I'm taking a little bit of white and just sort of creating some quick looking snowflakes just to add a little more detail to our snowman. All right, guys, check it out. There is your very beginner, super simple snowman, right? We hand painted the face on. Now, let that paint dry on the face, and if you decided to do little snowflakes, and then go ahead and get yourself some Rust-Oleum Clear, all right? Gloss, semi, whatever you want, and spray down the stuff that you painted by hand. If you use spray paint here and here, that'll be fine. But if you put this clear coat over this, once it's fully dry, it'll help last that much longer. Now, once everything dries, if you want, you guys can put a polyurethane on the whole thing. Personally, I'm just going to leave them uh, raw wood. And the reason is I want to keep that cost low. I want to be able to sell these guys from 40 to 50 bucks at most. Keep making this a really cheap carving that's about a foot tall. Now, you get into doing them a little bit more detailed like this guy. Right, where we actually carved the face, we did a full hat, we might be able to get a little more money out of it. Now this is the one we looked at in the shop. He is a little bit different than what we just did, but the same basic concept. 
a snowman, scarf, and a hat. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Something new, something fresh out here in the carving tent to help you beginners along and create some fun stuff. I hope I'm giving you guys enough time to be able to start making these. You know, Christmas is right around the corner, right? These make great gifts. So even if you're not looking to sell these items and you're just having fun, you're creating art, people will love these things as gifts. You know, maybe you do the auction or something like that with your family get together. Here's a perfect gift you might be able to put in there and, and give away or you know what, just make a bunch of them and give them away to family. Everybody loves a little snowman and you know, like I said, they're not super expensive. They're a cheap little piece and uh, anybody can afford them as well if that's the route you're going. For me, I'm gonna put a couple of these up on the Etsy store so if anybody's interested in making a purchase, you guys can buy them through there. Also, if you guys wanna purchase some merch and help support the channel, you can do so. There'll be a link in a bar down below in the description. I'll have tool links and everything I can link through Amazon below as well. Making purchases through that helps support the channel, guys. Also, big shout out to my members. Members, you guys rock. Really appreciate you guys supporting this channel monthly. You guys are the best. And all of you that are learning to carve, give me a thumbs up and hit and subscribe. That's a big deal too. It really is. It's helping this channel grow. We're just over 14,000 subscribers right now and growing daily. Daily, it's crazy. I think I've got the most views I've ever had this month at about uh, 68 to 70,000 views this month on the whole channel, which has been astronomical. I think those are the most views I've had in a month. So keep it up. You guys rock. You're really helping the channel grow. And uh, I really, really do appreciate it. So if you guys have made it this far, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Let me know how you guys are doing. Make sure you hit subscribe. When you guys do hit that bell, hit all. And make sure you turn on your YouTube notifications so you guys don't miss any future uploads. Also, one more thing. If you guys are creating these snowmen and you want to share with me, you guys can do so on Facebook. Go to Facebook, look up Kyle Hall, Woodworker, New Carvers. Make sure you answer all the questions that you're prompted to answer. I will personally let you in the group and you guys can share your snowmen. Now, keep in mind, we are going to be doing a December giveaway, okay? And you're going to want to be in that Kyle Hall Woodworker New Carvers group in order to enter the December giveaway that I'm going to be doing. That's going to be some saber tooth bits and a sweet die grinder. So that'll help you step up your game, help you get rolling, creating your art. And, uh, you know, that's what I want to do. I want to help you. So I thank you guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Check out some videos popping up. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.